I'm covering up my underfloor insulation. First of all, just to take away the the silver glow light that sort of sometimes reflects off it. Also, I wanted to uh, you know minimise pests making their way in. So I've just ran these strips of plyboard all the way down uh, from front to back. It's a bit gappy here and there, but it wasn't they're not perfect columns, so. So I just gave them a coat of the uh, green paint and um, covering all that up underneath so it's kind of secure. Or well, sealed is a better word. Just one of those little jobs that has to be done. So I basically had to uh, place the front on the car stands so that I could free the wheels up. Whether you remember or not, one of the earlier episodes when I was putting all this together, the left front wheel didn't have a spacer washer so it had a lot more play in it uh, and this is off the other side and it had a little, still had a little bit of play which I think they're designed to have a little bit of play because they don't have bearings or anything like that and this isn't a tight washer on the axle it's loose but I believe it's just a spacer and this wheel didn't have it, all the others did. So I had to jack it up, put it on the car stands, just put the wheels back on temporarily. So they're just hanging. And I've got to go out and find one of these. Safety first, apparently. You are not supposed to sit under a vehicle of any kind that is on the car stands. So don't do that, kids. Fortunately, we have a friend of the family who uh, runs... I believe, uh, like a military, a small military museum. And he has carts apparently, fully set up, you know, carts probably of a military nature, but you know, horse-drawn carriages basically. And so I want to touch base with him, number one, to see if he's got one of these. Otherwise I have to go on a search and try and find this dimensioned spacer washer. It's also a relative thickness to it. But I'm hoping he's got a working example among his carriages of, I can't for the life of me think of what it's called, but the timber beam mechanism that goes out to the horse. But I want to see how, how he's, he has his set up on here because I've seen such a range of example. Sometimes they're off here where the springs are and run out that wide. Others, I've seen one with it's got a pole across here and it's connected to that pole up here and goes out. So that's why I've currently got the front set up on car stands. Hopefully not for too long. I hope I get this very quickly. I can put put them back on and drop them back onto their uh, uh, what they're sitting on, what they've been sitting on all this time.
Well, I must say it has been a while, folks, between videos. It's been one of those times where there's been a lot of waiting around for certain things. A lot of uh, time spent making decisions on how to go about certain things. But I'm glad to say that I have ticked off quite a few jobs. First of all, the wood heater. I initially liked my clear stained hardwood timber floor with my full length running hall carpet, which I thought was a great look. Um, but then while I was working out the whole flue system with, uh, you know, professionals, um, wood heater places, they kept harping on about the safety aspect and all that, and I understood that I really have to do, I have to think about absolute safety. And so every wood fire, wood heater should have, or a wood stove, should be on a hearth and should have half in front of it where you open the door in case anything wants to spark out or anything like that. Unfortunately, my hardwood floor and my nice looking carpet are combustible. So I couldn't take that risk. So then I managed to find some faux weatherboard cement sheet, which generally is a wall cladding, but it was the fastest and quickest solution that I could think of. I could have tiled, but that would have been a lot of work. Underlay, tile glue, stick the tiles down, grout, clean, and I didn't want to do that, and I haven't done tiling before. But this stuff was easy enough, and so I just cut it into place, nailed it down, took three attempts at a colour choice. I basically just wanted to marry the remainder of the hardwood floor under the table at the feet area with a colour that wasn't, uh, you know, too contrasty. And so I went through a couple of colours and then landed on one called Woodland Brown, and I was very happy with that. So then I took that carpet, which was an El Cheapo, and I cut it into two pieces. Uh, one for the sitting area, just so you've got something nice and warm to sit your bare feet on. And one at the entry there. And then a little bit of bronze metal edging, just to bridge the two surfaces. And I'm happy with my final flooring situation, but it, more importantly, it gives me the middle section as a non-combustible in front of the wood heater. So that solved that issue. Now, I've got my flue in, and again, thinking of the utmost safety, it is a triple skin flue, which of course means it has girth. Uh, ten and a quarter, or ten and a half inches, I believe. And so I have that girth heading out through the roof. So we have the inner flue, the second skin, and then the third skin. The third skin you should be able to touch while the uh, wood heater is going. It'll be warm, but it won't. Uh... And when you use a triple skin, you can come within 25 millimeters, which is approximately an inch or so, within a combustible material, such as a timber ceiling batten or something like that. So technically, I didn't have to go triple skin because it's not a residential home, which is the Australian standards for residential homes. I could have got away with a double skin or a double walled flue but that second wall would be warm, very warm to the touch, and you have to have a much greater distance between that and combustible material. So I went with the triple skin. I've got satin black on the inside, and also with my Decra mesh, satin black. And outside I've just kept it the gal color. And with the hood on top, the cowl on top, I'm yet to light it up. But I have now also refurbished and resprayed the cast iron black areas of the wood heater. So the two doors, the single, uh, the middle door where you load into, the air intake down the bottom, and also the ashtray, and of course the hot plate. All cleaned up with wire brush, just surface rust, and then sprayed with pot belly black. And it looks fantastic, I have to say. Now, only one more thing to do with a wood heater, and that is 
a lot of fire in it. I'm very curious to see what kind of draw I get. It's not a very long flu and I was worried about that. However, I've actually got slightly more in length in this flu than I do have in what I live in, my caravan with a wood heater in it. And that draws perfectly. So I've got to do that test, the first burn test of this wood heater. What else have I done? I still don't have cushions, mattress or curtains. Again, I think they're all going to have to be made to order, which is going to be costly. So I'm just holding that off to the very end, and whether or not I do it at all, we'll find out. I also put a little timber sliding double door over the front door window, just to block out light completely, if one desires. And as you can see, I have lights and power. Fully wired, fully powered, fully lit. I had my friend Adam back and uh, he got the fit off done over a couple of visits. The only drawback is, other than white cover plates for the light switches and the power points, two things, they're hard to get and they're expensive. I wanted something dark, like brown or something like that, like a Bakelite brown. And as you can see, I've also got an old Bakelite brown plaque board with two power points and individual switches for them. So that's in the kitchen area there. My two main lights, which are this main room light, looks fantastic on this side. Unfortunately, the bedroom one there's some bend or kink in it, which makes it look like this. Um, I'm not sure how to go about fixing that, but I'm glad it's on the other side and you can't see it unless you're in bed. But the light's cleaned up well and I think I love them, they look great. And I think at night time it's plenty of light. And I also have my kitchen light underneath the little kitchen above the sink shelf. Little LED strip light there. At the back, we have our very modern LED external strip light, just wired, hardwired in, so I've got the switch at the door there, I've got a six gang switch, six switches at the door. It takes a long time to get used to knowing which one, I might have to label them. And then of course I've got all my power points. So I've got the double power point and aerial in the bedroom, so that's for when I do a mounted wall mounted TV. Not very gypsy, but uh, you know, this is a modern gypsy wagon. I've got my microwave, double power point for microwave and fridge. And I've also got this double power point and USB point, just under the table, set up just under the entry to the bedroom, right beside the other seat. Very handy for working with a laptop or charging things. And one other good thing is that I was able to have the switchboard just placed in and out of the way, but easily accessible. One of the little areas of my little mini bookshelf. And so I can kill the power really quickly. And if something needs to be changed, it can be gotten to. And of course my beautiful outside lights. I have my coach lights at the front. My more traditional coach light on the side. Oh, and I've also got my intake power for the 15 amp lead, so it's like a caravan, with a double power point underneath, external for doing work, plugging in power tools or whatnot. And of course underneath, <laughs> a bit of totally unnecessary but welcome bling my wraparound LED strip lighting. And here's what it all looks like at night. Pretty cool, hey? Not bad at all. I've also got my little horse head door knocker. A little bit of bling up on the front barge board, halfway, right in the middle, halfway between the lion's heads. Also copper rose. Folks, we are so close to the end of this journey. 
I haven't had a haircut since I started this. I decided I'm just going to grow my hair long. And boy does it take a long time to grow. But one day, hopefully, it'll be long enough that I can realise my dream of a Hatfield and McCoy style long hair and beard being a hermit in the bush with his trusty claymore and his red long johns with his bum flap open jumping up and down on the porch going get out of here varmint to the trespassers that want to come on his land it's a dream I'll get there one day so I'm here in my utterly disorganized workshop and I'm starting to work on my buggy shaft. Now straight up, this is going to be a faux buggy shaft. It won't be a functional buggy shaft. And there's a reason for that. When I started this journey and bought the entire undercarriage, there were two very long single piece shafts that weren't identical. At first I thought they were a two piece, just a disassembled two piece single horse shaft with two timbers either side of the horse but because they weren't identical and they were very long over well over four meters it only really just recently dawned on me that what I think I had was two versions of a single piece shaft for a team of horses that go down the middle of the horses so at least two or more horses and I'm also 99% sure that the carriage I have here was never a single horse carriage it's very heavy duty and there is a person that knows but I haven't um, that may know that I haven't got in touch with yet as you can see behind me I have a what looks like a buggy shaft I initially had a bit of a fantasy dream of closing out this series with a big surprise and have a horse pulling this cart around the paddock and parking it up into position but I'm fast realizing that uh, that's going to be a very difficult uh, operation to perform I got in contact with a couple Julie and Andrew who have Clydesdales and a couple of buggies here and there and they're horse people she was the one who mentioned that maybe this person uh, might know exactly what I've got here it's definitely not a single horse cart. So you can see a buggy behind me, which is one of theirs that I borrowed to kind of use as a template to make up a faux shaft. And I've just used it for basic measurements, uh, widths and stuff like that. You can see with my timbers that I do have a slight taper. Uh, I've cut them down, which could be sacrilege, cutting the original single piece shafts. But I've cut them down to a length I think it looks about right and I'm just going to make up what looks like a shaft for aesthetic value just to round out the finished look of this whole thing and I've just been looking around at what I can use to make it look like a shaft and so it will have a bit of a decorative nature to it but as usual we'll have a go at it and see what we come up with
Well, so far today is not a good day. It's been raining pretty much all morning. It's now around about midday or so. I can't really do any outside work, although the rain has just stopped for a brief moment. So, this is a really good opportunity to test my wood heater. So I went up and cut up some uh, very dry tinder from old fence palings and just some little tree fall logs been sitting in the tub for a while quite dry I'm not going to muck around I'm just going to go with modern day cube fire lighters it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not I have any smoke escaping I've got the new mica glass in the window so let's get to it and see what it's like So far so good, drawing really well out of the chimney. I'm detecting no smoke escaping from the wood heater. I have the air intake fully open down at the bottom. The door is open. Now I started this at approximately 12, 13 degrees Celsius which I don't have a Fahrenheit measure on that thermometer, so let's say 12 degrees Celsius. You guys overseas can work that out. It's burning really well in there. It's good dry wood. So I'm gonna let all that catch well alight and put up, put on a couple of um, decent logs that I've got here. I can't go too long. I can only do about, you know, six inches long, seven inches long maybe. It's not a really tight door seal, but nothing is escaping from it. And the rain has just come back in now, so I think it's time to close the door and the windows and see what temperature this can get up. The hot plate is really heating up, so it'll be very good for cooking. Decra mesh around the inner flue, very warm to the touch. The triple skin is still cool, so that's going to do exactly what it's intended to do. I think it's time to close everything up and see how long it will take to get this temperature up. It's probably been going now for five minutes. We started at 12 degrees. going really well so far. Another five to ten minutes have passed and it's just about 17 degrees now. So I've just put another log on there and closed the air intake down the bottom fully just to see what would happen. There's no visible smoke in the room so that's good. Mental note on two things. We need a permanent fire extinguisher in here and one of those, um, what is it, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide detectors. One of those mounted on the wall somewhere as well. We're at 18 degrees. It's warming up very nicely. I'm going to mark that as a success. Successful wood heater installation and flue. 
The decremesh immediately surrounding the inner flue is very hot to the touch. You can't lay your hands on it for too long. Uh, the second part of decremesh that it goes into is easy to touch and the triple skin remains cool so that is really good that's really cool through the roof it's now so well lit that there is no smoke out of the flue out of the chimney it's just a nice clean burn my pressed metal tin at the back is cool or warm to the touch only where the top plate back at the flue where it's very close to the metal it's quite warm but even just traveling a little bit further down where the firebox is easy to touch the sides easy to touch cool to touch and directly behind the triple skin the exposed timber wall cool to touch everything good and now the triple skin is slightly warming up it's halfway between cool and warm and in the few minutes that have just passed by blowing off we're approaching 19 degrees Celsius let me do the calculations here so we started at 12 degrees Celsius or 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit we're currently at 19 degrees Celsius at, or 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a reasonable slow burn with the air intake down below turned off. It's quite efficient. A very successful result. I'm very happy with it. Oh, it's hit 26 degrees Celsius, or 78 thereabouts Fahrenheit it's time to crack a window it's getting a bit warm in here I'm curious now to know what it's like to cook on this thing definitely enough heat That's very interesting. I went down for some lunch. I left the windows cracked. The wood was still burning and it was about 30 degrees inside, which is right up there, I guess, in the 80s of the Fahrenheit's. Or 90, whatever. Now I've just come back after about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes. It's still 28 degrees. The wood is burned out, there's just some glowing coals and ashes. The windows are open and it only dropped 2 degrees in that time. So it obviously continued to burn for a while after I left, but then burnt out. I guess that points to the insulation as well. I've got the wool insulation in the walls, I've got the foam insulation in the ceilings, the foam insulation in the floor. Being that it's a very tiny space, it really uh, heated up quickly and retain the heat after the burning had finished with windows open so that's very very good and seeing as though it got up to uh, 30 degrees or more after I left I'm not sure you don't need a lot of wood to maintain a comfortable temperature absolute success on the wood heater love it cozy I can imagine a very cosy night in bed in the middle of winter with the wood heater crackling softly excellent a compromise on my steps yes I absolutely wanted the curvy style steps not the straight albeit on an angle couldn't find anything that was you know wide enough to and you know relatively affordable to trace a full piece curve stringer out of two stringers and then I saw these at 
Bunnings. Pine shelving with curved live edge. $20 each. It's pine, I understand that. And it will be external, but it's going to get a heavy undercoat and two good coats of external paint. And it should last for a while. I'll have something on the bottom that they won't actually sit on the ground. They will be slightly raised. So that's my compromise between curvy and straight. Pretty much a straight set of steps with a funky curvy live edge top.
Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Episode 12. Ballad of the Balustrade. I know, it's had the least amount of views. All the other videos have had more views. Well, I thought it was my magnum opus. Oh, look, I've got to go. Yeah, okay, talk to you later. See ya. I think I'm going to round out this one here, folks. And I think I am very, very close to the end. I think it would be nice to round out this series on episode Sweet 16. So stay tuned, we are almost finished the Gypsy Wagon Project.